Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks again for joining us at WJMM 99.1 Central Kentucky Christian Radio. Or maybe you're listening on the podcast. Thanks for that as well. And share it as the Lord leads you. Today, as I said yesterday, we're going to wrap up this little mini-series, transition series on wisdom, truth, and love from God's Word. And we use it as kind of a bridge to move from the names of God, knowing and loving God through His names, to our identity in Christ so we can know and love who we are. These are crucial in us fulfilling the first and second greatest command. Now, I mentioned the podcast. If You, you can listen to that at WJMM.com. Go to the podcast tab near the upper right and then click on the Love and Lordship links and you'll find today and the previous two days. Or you can go to loveandlordship.com. There's plenty of videos, podcasts, and articles there. You can also uh, click on the Vimeo link there down near the bottom middle of the page or the Podbean and you'll find numerous other uh, videos and podcasts there as well. I'd love to know what you think. Contact us at love and lordship all together, love and lordship at gmail.com and at questions, comments, disagreements, whatever you, you think. I'd love to love to hear from you. Now, yesterday was about the priorities of God loving us and our learning how to love him first and foremost, the first and greatest command, right? Today it gets a little more personal because it's about what real love is as we live it out in our own life and with others. Here and now. Mark 12, 29 through 31. I referenced it several times yesterday, but we're going to read it today. Jesus answered, they were trying to trick him. What's the greatest command? The first and greatest command is worship God alone. Love the Lord your God with all your being. The second is love who you are in Christ so you can love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Now in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus said, these two fulfill all the laws and the prophets. You see, now that was kind of my paraphrase. But you can go back and read it for yourself and test, test and see if I'm, I'm correct on that. Jesus' answer regarding the greatest commandment should not only inform us, but guide or direct us as to how we are to love. By proclaiming very poignantly that there is a first and greatest, and then there's a second command that's like it, but it is second, should guide us in everything when it comes to loving God and loving others. The beauty of the Greek language of the New Testament, unlike our very relativistic English language, is that it was very precise. Why didn't God just send Jesus in today's time in history when his message could spread like wildfire through the digiverse, right? God's word tells us that he came at just the right or perfect time. Read Ephesians 1, 9 and 10 and Galatians 4, 4. You think God knew of the extremely relativistic culture, which has existed since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, but it's gotten con con uh, consistently worse throughout the, the eons, <laughs> the millennia. And it dominates our globe today. Of course he understood the times. He created them. He understands all things. All of this, this just magnifies the relevance and priority of how we are to love. He told us. Number one, we can only love from yesterday. We can only love because he first loved us. He's given us love, 1 John 4, 19. Number two, even though we are to show God's love by the way we love others, this does not dismiss how we get there. The first command, to learn to know and love God as priority and continual growth in love for him throughout our lifetime. Mark 12, 29 and 30. I just read or paraphrased those three verses, 29 through 31, and I pick up 31 here. And number three, we are to know and love who we are in Christ. Mark 12, 31. And now, according to his design and order of commands, we are equipped to mature in Christ so we can, number four, love others as we love ourselves. Again, Mark 12, 31. And has, he has loved us, John 13, 34 and 35. Ultimately, his love that we are to model is the giving of ourself away for the sake of others. That's what Jesus did. Why do I continue to press this issue? Well, there's, there's two main reasons. Number one, we tend to practically ignore the first and greatest command and fail to disciple new, young, infant believers 
and helping them grow first and foremost to know and love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. We, at least by our actions, we seem to assume that when they're saved, they're already there. Well, if that were the case, we wouldn't need the command. And in so doing and ignoring that, number two, it follows that we constantly then send out or try to grow up, there's not much growing, new believers to love as nearly empty infants. They try to love all others, but it's ultimately in the flesh because we haven't discipled them on how to love according to God's love, Him first. My prayer is that Christ church, His true disciples and followers, will take to heart the priority of His commands so we can show the world what His love looks like because we have loved according to his word and covenant order. Do you know Christ and what it means to even be able to love God with all you are? Are you trying then to love others without spending time to know God and his word in order to love from the true source of love found only in Christ and the Holy Spirit? How are you making the time to know and love God? Time in his word, in prayer, listening to his spirit. Take to heart God's word for the preciseness and the priority that his truth expresses to us and find that it is his love that makes all the rest of this love possible. Now we continue then with a simple but profound truth building on yesterday's priority of commands in God's covenant order. If we're not spending time daily to know and love the creator, first command, love God with all you are, then what is our source of love for ourselves and others? John 7, 38 says, To him who believes, out of him will flow streams of living water. As you spend time in God's word, in prayer, and listening to him, you can't help but soak in his love. Learn to love him more and then know and love who you are in Christ. Remember, love's not a feeling. This is right from our book, and that it's biblical in, in, in its context. It's not a feeling, but a commitment, and therefore a choice or an act of the will based on that commitment over and over again, continually, because those who love him will obey his commands, John 14, 15. Love is obedience. I know we don't like to hear that in our culture today, and we shy away from it, many of our churches. It's keeping his commands because they are what is best for us as the loving God is the one who has given them to us. He does it in love. And he says, the only way I'm going to know it is if you choose to obey me out of love. There are hundreds of commands in Scripture that come from this loving God and therefore are good. But because they have to be done in love, there are no demands it must be a deliberate choice of your free will by faith. That's love, expressing your love for him. 1 John 5, 2 through 4, read that. That's what it's talking about. This carries over into knowing and loving who you are, who I am in Christ. And we're going to start tomorrow with our Identity in Christ series. I share this message with churchgoers, prisoners, addicts, and on and on. And I ask the question, as you grew up and went to church, did it feel like Everything was a demand, and nearly every single person raises their hand and replies, yes, it's exactly what it felt like. Well, let me relieve you of that. Demanded or forced obedience is never love. Only willing submission is love. Christ modeled that. They didn't take my life. I willingly get laid it down. That's love. This impacts who you are in Christ and how you build, nurture, and live out every other relationship in him. If he is Lord of your life, then it must show by your willing submission to him, your love for him, then in every other relationship. True love willingly gives itself away for the sake of the other. Christ has made a way for you to be in that loving relationship with him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, John 3, 16, John 15, 13. Have you received him as Savior and Lord so you can know his love and love him in return? Only then are you able to love yourself and others as he has loved us. Loving ourself seems contradictory to godly love, and unfortunately, as we've allowed the culture then to redefine and dictate what love is, that wrong thinking is reinforced. When it's based on natural fleshly feelings and emotion, it becomes loving self for the sake of self, and that is actually 
selfishness and lust. This is why we can't love apart from God and Christ in us. We must know his love, learn to love him before we can truly love at all, ourselves or others. His love, agape, literally means to prefer him above all else because he is love. If I compromise his truth in any way and call it love, I'm not truthful or loving. As we grow in this real love, we find that it has very little to do with what we get from it because we are assured of all we need from him. His model in creation and in Christ is a love that is sacrificial, unconditional, and self-giving. He loves us even when we don't love in return. Now, there's a consequence to that eventually, but he is always waiting with open arms for us to turn to him no matter what we've done. It's always for our sake for the good of the other, and in God's case, us. When we then learn to know and love who we are in Christ, Ephesians 2.10 tells us that we can love others. We can live out what he's put in. We can do the good works he's prepared in advance for us to do, and that is sacrificially give ourselves to love others for the sake of others. The key is to know and love him so that your identity is in who you are in Christ and not let the world and those of the world rate, rank, and compare you, giving you a false identity in a fallen world. By his grace and faith that we've been given, you can know him as Savior and walk with him as Lord, and that's the only way we truly love him. We truly love ourselves. Romans 12, 3. Present your body a living sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world, but be being continually transformed by the renewing of your mind. And in so doing, we're able to love others. But it's a choice, a commitment of loving obedience. Love God and love yourself, the self that Christ recreated you to be. God desires that you do this so you can then show others what his love looks like. Food for thought again as we wrap up. Christ left all the glories of heaven, became flesh by becoming us as a human being, faced all that we face, and gave his life as the perfect sacrifice. That's what you're worth. That's what defines who you truly are. Don't let anything else get in the way of that. Have you accepted that no matter what the world says, you understand that, or are you still trying to prove who you are by the world's broken and deceived standards? Four action items again. They're going to be the same in this. Read the scriptures in this episode and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Two, journal what you've then learned about love in today's message. Number three, spend time in God's word and prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to show you who you are in Christ and all that he has in store for you. You are his workmanship, recreated in Christ to do so, Ephesians 2.10. And then finally, spend time in God's word and prayer and ask him to show you how to love who you are in Christ. Show you who you are, and then how to love who you are. Now tomorrow, as I promised, we're going to kick off our Identity in Christ series. So join us so we can learn how to love who we are because we know who we are in Christ. Invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to join us. We all need to hear this gospel message and this tr message of true love. Thank you today for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Now stay tuned for Bill Reeser and Encounter coming up next. And at 1245, my good friend Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.